I've had a good day today. I feel like the, the time has come to talk about this frame here. I made a video about this frame actually just as kind of like a first look. And um, I've had a few months to fly this thing and compete with it in some races. And I want to give y'all my honest opinion about it. So with that being said, let's uh, just jump right into it. So this frame is the uh, Hyperlite Floss 3 Hybrid. This is a Stretch X uh, Hybrid design. And what that means is, is that the arms in the front are designed for uh, five inch propellers. And the arms in the back are actually designed for six inch propellers. However, I'm running, you know, five and a half, I mean, I'm sorry, five inch props all the way around. These props are actually the HQ 5.1 uh, inch props. And as you can see, um, I mean, they do fit. They don't contact this nylon canopy or anything else for that matter. And uh, just to cut right to the chase, I really like this frame. Um, look, let me, I wanna tell you about kind of some of the advantages of running a stretched X hybrid frame for racing. Um, so before I do that, let's talk about frame geometry. I've actually got um, three frames here. Two of them are built. This one, unfortunately, is kind of uh, in a state of disrepair, but they will kind of all work together. So this, I'll start with this. So this is a Truex design, and what that means is, is that the motors um, uh, left to right are the same distance as the motors from front to back. So it's it's a it's a symmetrical true X. Now over here, this is my main uh, freestyle rig that I've been flying. Like this frame is like 16 months old, like and it, it's great. I love it. This is a squished X design. In a squished X, the arm or the motors um, uh, front to back are closer together than they are. Um, left to right. And a stretch X is the opposite of a squished X. The motors are further apart, um, top to bottom, as they are from left to right. So what changing what this geometry does is this gives you more authority on the pitch axis as opposed to the roll axis. And how that translates to um, this thing in flight is that uh, this tracks in a straight line very, very well. It's it's very it's very stable and it flies very true. Um, it's kind of like like an arrow in a way. Like when this thing is just going in a straight line, at least to me, it feels like like it just like it wants to stay there. Like it doesn't want to get you know thrown about like a like a squished X frame does. This wants to fly straight and true. Now, what sets this apart from a traditional stretch X is that it's running slightly longer arms in the back. Now, what does that do for you? Longer arms in the back help get the rear props out of the dirty air that is being caused by the front props. So our quadcopters here, they're, we're flying through the air like this, because you know, our cameras are pointed you know, straight up, as you can see. So we have to fly through the air like that. Well, as we're flying, our, our front propellers, you know, they're pushing air like this, and these, these motors are actually kind of in that air. So uh, what a six inch arm does, it kind of gets these motors um, a little bit further away out of the dirty air that is being generated by these uh, front two propellers, and it gets them into much cleaner, much more stable air. So what that means is that in turns, there's way less uh, prop wash. So that means that when you go around a turn, let's say you get into that prop wash, your quad will spend you know, less time you know, just kind of jittering in that disturbed air. It makes it easier to you know, get on the throttle and kind of exit the turn like more fat, like faster and in a much cleaner fashion. Um, I've let one of our local pilots here uh, fly this frame. He normally flies a traditional, um, I shouldn't say traditional, but he flies a, uh, a true X quad. And as soon as he tried this within like 15 seconds, he immediately noticed the difference. Um, he was like, yeah, I, I can 
I can carry a lot more speed through turns, I can get out of the turns faster, and he actually ended up switching one of his race quads over to a, uh, a Stretch X uh, hybrid uh, kind of configuration like this. Let's talk about uh, what are some of the downsides um, of this frame. So like I said, it wants to go in a straight line, but in a, but in a race, we're not going in a straight line a lot of the time. We still have to, you know, do a lot of really fast twists and turns. And the motors that I'm running, these are 2205.5. That's the stator size of these motors. And to me at least, this thing doesn't seem to corner as naturally as a squished X quad does. Now, there are a few factors to that. Number one, I uh, I don't fly this frame that often because I'm more of a freestyle pilot than I am a racer. Um, so, and also I'm running a 1.8 millimeter lens as opposed to a 2.5, so it, kind of viewing the world through a 1.8 lens with so much fish eyes still kind of feels a bit wonky to me. Um, However, I think one thing that would make getting into turns easier is actually if I ran a higher uh, stator size. So I would say if you're going to run this quad, uh, run either a 2306 or a 2207 or a 2207.5 stator size. That seems to be the most popular uh, motor size for a 5 inch race quad like this. A larger stator is going to give you more torque, which is going to give you uh, more a more authoritative stick feel and should help kind of counteract this frame's geometry of getting it into a turn. Um, I mean, and that's, that's honestly the only negative thing I have about this frame. I honestly have no problem recommending this to anyone who uh, wants to build one of these. This frame is very durable. I have had some hard crashes. <laughs> On the race course, I have yet to break an arm. These arms are five millimeters thick. This thing is built like a tank. Um, yeah, the, like this thing could take a hit and and it'll just keep coming. As for me, uh, I'm definitely gonna keep using um, this race frame. Hopefully within the next few months, um, I can build an identical version of this, just obviously with different uh, motors. Just as a rule of thumb, I like to have, you know, uh, two identical setups of the quad that I'm flying. So that way, like if and when I break a quad, I can just, I have another one that's ready to go. I'll include the the PIDs and setups that I have for this in the video description um, down below. I haven't touched filters on this quad um, as well as the BL Heli um, revision. So yeah, I'll, I'll be sure and post PIDs and stuff of this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, Oh, one, one other thing, uh, two other things I want to point out. Number one, uh, this frame does support a 20x20 uh, a 20 20 hardware. You can run either a 30x30 30 30 stack or a 20x20 20 20, um, stack inside of this frame, no problem. It, it has the, the mounting patterns for both. And uh, where possible, run dual battery straps. I don't run one big one, I run two battery straps because um, with this frame I've had more than one instance where you know I'm flying I'm having a, a good run and I hit something and the battery strap breaks I've had one too many I, I've had too many battery strap or battery ejections because the battery keeps because the strap keeps breaking spoiling my race so yeah I run two of these straps and I've got to have an issue of you know me hitting something so hard that you know one of these straps break and it throws my battery across the field. So those are my thoughts on this frame. Yeah. In conclusion, I'm really really happy with this. Solid thumbs up for me. Um, so yeah, that, that's gonna do it. Thank you very much for this video. Look for um, 
a video about this guy coming in the future. I've recently uh, switched all my freestyle quads over to 6S and I've been working really hard to develop a, a solid baseline uh, 6S uh, PID setup. So look forward to that coming in the future. That's gonna do it. Thank you very much for the fit. Thank you all very much for your time and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.